hi everybody sunny bonani welcome to our channel <laughs> anyway you guys i'm going to do part two of the story time how i was in a cult yo if only you guys could see the if only i'm balancing <laughs> anyway you guys so to, now i'm doing a part two i'm not going to recap what i did in part one you guys if you want to know uh just check the video got part one on how i was in a cult okay so continuing from part one now i am in this house and remember uh, i'm in this house with these women that i don't know i think they were like sharing was that a flat or a house in yovel okay you know like in your very back because this was like 98 and um in your very back then it was not as nice as it used to be but the flats there when you go into uh the flats you could see was these used to be like sort of like luxurious flats inside but now yeah well I'm sure it's worse now. By the time I left job, it was like becoming a Nigeria Republican. You know, you know what I mean. So yes, you guys. So it was an, an a nice place, but in a very like busy section of Yovel. And my sister used to stay. What was it called? Bellevue there by on top there by the mountain where the flats were still a little bit nicer. La bebe you know. So okay, we uh, we get there now. There's this uh, three women. I think they shared a flat. Now it's the colored woman, the M. Uh, oh, come with the other one, and then the other colored lady. Now the South African colored lady. But you know, um, I'm a colored lawa where like you just see untando and you think also kulumi zulilo avela kulumi accent. I'm a colored that you know. I, I didn't expect that she was colored, but then when she started speaking, and I was like, oh okay. And then I think another sister, I think I can't remember because, but they were sharing Ilona Iflet. So we get there. That's when I find out it was okay. G is not coming. Okay. Through OG, I, I had also met another friend, and uh, another uh, her friend who had also become my friend. But at the time, I was getting to know them. So they were not really like my friend, friend, friend. But I knew them. So I would have been comfortable if they were there. So I had met G, because she's the one that invited me. Now B, because B used to come a lot to G's room, you know. G used to stay in a self-catering rest. So she used to come to Sunnyside, you know, like during meal time and all of that. What I liked about them was just the spirit of like sharing. I remember when uh, I had just met B and she came to my room and uh i had like a, an apple on uh the side on my side thing was it a desk or whatever that was on the side of my bed and she was like are you going to eat that apple and i was like no i'm full actually i i ate and then she was like can i have it and she took it guys listen someone else might have thought ah, then domazani is totally up <laughs> but in my mind, I thought it was yo mina bengzo lambangi then ask a stranger because at the time I was a stranger. I knew um, G. I didn't know B. I didn't know B, but B asked me for an apple and she was okay with it. And she said on my bed was little apple and we talked and whatever, you know. And then so I was like, hey, mina bengzo find lalanjeng kilibugi apple from someone I don't know. I wouldn't have. So then what I noticed was that. Um, she would go to the dining hall and fetch her food. Most of the time, she wouldn't eat in the dining hall. She would fetch her food and go eat in her room. And then uh, B would come and eat with her, you know. So they used to share their food. And uh, so now if I have food left, uh, like I, end, I would end up sometimes go to their room when they're eating together. So I was getting used to them. But I didn't know that it was all about his own, you know. So I like that. I like that. So now my sometimes I would even take my food now and come back with it and 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 uh, and eat with them. So I I like that. G and B were very um, chilled. Okay, they were at church too. They were disciples too, but they were they were very chilled about it. Maybe because they were campus students, you know. And then I had also met a a, a was was she guys. People must not come for me. 
I don't know if she was Chinese or Japanese. I have had time like <laughs> differentiate. Was she Chinese going to a yeah, but I'm just indicating she wasn't black, but she was she was at um G and B's disciple. So she was discipling both of them. So she used to come to Ares a lot, but she was living at home. Okay, because her family was all well off and stuff, so she wasn't living at Res. And so I, I had met her as well. Like Jane passing, oh yes, oh she's also studying the Bible. I don't even know what that means at the time, okay? So I get there, I'm thinking maybe G, maybe B, maybe A will be there. I, if any of them would have been there, I would have been comfortable because the other people I didn't know. So that's why I wanted so much to just go and at least sleep over at my sister's place rather than at that place with the people that I didn't know. But that's where I felt like they started being pushy about it. Okay, no, uh, we still have to do the Bible study. I'm thinking, what kind of a Bible study are you going to do where it's just your roommate and me? You know, because I thought there was going to be people there, but there's no people there. Fine, I just give in. Okay, I want to do this Bible study. And then I want to, they say, no, you're going to sleep here. Don't worry, you'll be comfortable and whatever. They show me everything in the house and then we sit down and do a Bible study. Now, here's the thing that uh, put me off uh, that night was now we, we're doing the Bible study. Okay. Remember when we did that first, I thought it was Bible talk where everybody was just there to do the Bible study. But I didn't realize that that was a one-on-one -on -one Bible study. Because there's a difference between a Bible talk and a Bible study. A Bible talk is when a group just comes and do a discussion you know, of a verse or whatever, or scripture or whatever. A, a Bible study is when you do one on one. Like you are doing the the because they had a sequence of studies that you had to do to become a disciple. You know, to get baptized, and you couldn't get baptized without doing those studies. So, so now they're doing the study. I realize it's not a Bible talk. They are actually doing a study with me. Okay, fine, because I want to get over with it. Maybe go to bed and sleep. Not that I was feeling unsafe, but I'm not somebody that gets easily comfortable with people you know anybody else would have been okay because they were okay they were friendly uh it, i i didn't feel threatened but it was just that i don't know these people okay <laughs> so we do the study okay let me explain the studies thing okay so that maybe you understand uh going forward there's I don't remember each and every study that we used to do, but there are particular st studies that I remember because I feel like those were the st studies that were taken as the most serious. Like you, you were mostly asked, have you done the word? Have you done, I think it was the kingdom, have you done the cross, you know? The, the first study that you did was the word, you know, which I didn't realize they had already done the study, the word with me at that Bible talk. Because remember when I said, go to, the take away from that study was the Bible is very important. You have to own the Bible. You have to be reading the Bible. The Bible is your guide. That is, that is where you go to. You're supposed to be like this with your Bible. You know, the word of God is very important. That's what guides you. If you don't read the word of God, you might as well not call yourself a Christian because it's about the word, the word, the word. That's why the, the study is called the word. Okay. So I didn't realize I've already done it because I thought it was just a discussion between four people who were there. But the others were already disciples. I wasn't. It's just that I don't remember the other person who it was. I think it was just a girl from um, Rez. But anyway, you guys. Now, they want to move with the study. So, to move to the next study, you had to... The, the person that does the, the next study with you will have to rehash what's happening uh, with what they taught you the first time. And also, if you did any of the things that they recommended after the study... So the lady is asking me, have you, do you have the Bible now? Are you reading your Bible every day? How, what have you learned from your Bible? I'm like, girl, I don't even have a Bible. They're like, eh, but uh, the last Bible uh, study we had, uh, we, we, we did uh, tell you that, you, you know, if you're serious about getting to know God and all of that, you need to get your own Bible and you need to be reading it every day. And they had a, a um, they had a particular version of the Bible that they would always recommend that you get. Everybody had to get. Come on, what was it called? Guys, I have a tendency, like, if a part of my life is not my favorite, I don't bother to remember the details. I check it somewhere in my memory, and I don't care to remember the details. So there was one version of the Bible that they would say, when you buy, buy the Bible, buy this version. But it was still the Bible that everybody else uses. It's just that this particular Bible, 
um, they, it said things the way that they wanted things to be said so that you understood the Bible the way that they wanted you to understand the Bible, okay? So this one uh, is trying to convince them, like, listen, I will get the Bible when I get the Bible. Okay, let's do this Bible study. But I'm not understanding that to move on to the next Bible study, I need to have understood and done the things that you're supposed to do after doing the words Bible study. Otherwise, they don't see the need because they want to do the Bible studies with people that they know eventually they will be getting baptized. But at that time, I didn't even know what there was baptism at the end of the whole thing that we were doing. So I was, I must have been like the most difficult study, like having been in ch a church and knowing uh, how it goes with people studying the Bible. I was the difficult one. In fact, when I was a disciple, people uh, that had uh, those ladies, uh, some of those ladies, because some of them had to sit in because you had, when you're a disciple and someone is studying with someone, you could sit in. The others did sit in in our studies. They would, they would joke about it to say, you were like the most difficult <laughs> person to do a study, to study a Bible with. Okay, fine. So when you, so I'm not understanding why she's making a big deal and I get emotional about it because I don't want to be here. I want to go home at best. I want to go to my sister's place, sleep there, wake up, go home in time for breakfast at rest. Because here at Futsi, they didn't have a lot of food. Okay, I don't even remember if we ate. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and so I wanted to be over the study, go to bed and wake up in the morning and go. Okay. And then uh, what happened? Okay. So we do the study, I get emotional about it, and then now they, they're getting really pushy about the fact that I'm not serious about it. If I'm studying the Bible, I'm like, what is this about? Like, I was so lost, you guys. If I, You know, I end up just agreeing with everything that I say. Okay, fine, I'll get the Bible, I'll study the Bible every day, whatever. We are done. And then they do give me an ultimatum if you are serious about this, whatever. But in my mind, I'm like, I'm done with these people. Okay, these are crazy Bible people. <laughs> so... We sleep, I wake up in the morning, get ready. I think she gave me taxi money. I take a taxi to Bramfontein, go to rest. Now, with me, because one thing that attracts people uh, to ICOC is their church services. If the, like, the strategy that was best to use with somebody if you wanted them to study the Bible was to invite them, for the first time, invite them to their church services. Because, guys, their church services were really, really their best. Especially if you invite somebody to a big church service, like uh, we used to have big services at Standard Bank Arena, okay? If you invited somebody at Standard Bank Arena and they saw the Church of Christ service at Standard Bank Arena, the singing, the fellowship, the word of God, people getting baptized, people, you know... If you invited a person after church, they'd be like, what do I do to, to join this church? And they'd be like, we have to do the studies. And then the person will study. So for me, because I hadn't seen any of their church services. So for me, it, it just didn't. I don't think they were putting it together. That this person hasn't been to a church service. So obviously she doesn't even, um, she hasn't had anything that attracted her. She just attended one Bible study and then another one. And she, did, she, wasn't, even sure, she wasn't even aware that she's doing Bible study. So I go back to res. Fine. The thing about uh, B and G was, was that they were disciples, but they were very easy going with it. You know, there were people that were very zealous, inviting people. They were, they were doing that as well, but in a very chilled way. You know, so it was like I liked how they were with with. You know one another even like meeting uh brothers that will come in and and see them on campus and all of that like it was chilled i was meeting also like brothers that were from kzn and the way that they took care of each other like if if a sister wants to go and study in the library they they're not walking alone okay there will be brothers there by uh, Sunnyside, by the door to walk you to wherever, to the library. If you wanted to go to Bramfonte, if you wanted to go to town. The sister never walked alone anyway. So there was that, uh, you know, environment of taking care of each other. A sister, you know, what your sisters need. If you were coming from church at night, which I hadn't been, Mina. If you were coming to church at night and you had to walk, you didn't have transport. The brothers will have to make sure that every single sister is walked to wherever they are. They are safe then they will have to go home, you know, 
no matter how far sisters have to be walked to if they don't have money for transport then we walked everywhere okay so i like that seeing that with them okay so i think uji decided to continue doing the studies with me i think she explained it better with me you know and uh so but she wasn't pushy as well because i don't respond well to being pushed to do anything so uh okay what happened i think i went to my sister's place and uh, the the following weekend and uh she was going to church now remember my sister was also doing the the, the bible studies now my sister is like almost getting baptized you know i don't know guys if there are eight or ten studies that you have to do i can't remember because it was just not important enough to remember at this point so my sister is like almost at baptism and she's going to church. We go to church uh, with her. Standard Bank Arena, you guys. We go to church with her. Amazing church service. I'm like, I want to be here. I want to be here with these people. You know, I come back, go back to campus now. Because now when I'm at Standard Bank Arena, I'm seeing uh, the OG. I'm seeing uh, o, OP. Did I say M? I'm seeing OG, I'm seeing OB, I'm seeing OA there, and you know, it's all exciting. Some people that are, you know, I only know on campus, but I didn't know they were part of the church. I, I see them there, and uh, and then I'm like, okay, maybe, you know, but those ladies, I just didn't feel their energy, those ones that were in the ministry, you know, because they were a little bit pushy. Not a little bit, they were too pushy, okay? So then after the church service, I go back to campus and then uh, G continues to invite me to, you know, church things like Bible talks and whatever. And then she would do the studies with me and she did the studies with me like um, slow by slow. And B would come and sit in and sometimes A would come and sit in, you know. And, uh, you know, in ICOC there is um, levels to spirituality you know entry point and and a person that they feel is more spiritual than you which usually is the person that has been in uh, at the church in the church for the for longer than you would normally disciple you and then people that come after you usually people that you baptize you disciple those people unless they feel that maybe you are not grown in the lord to disciple people then they will allocate them to other people maybe your disciple will disciple the person that you baptize because if you do the studies with somebody they get to the point where they decide to get baptized that is your study that is your you have one that soul you're the one that actually baptizes the person and then you disciple them if you are not uh, then your disciple will disciple them or if your disciple has too many people that they disciple then they will give them to someone else okay also, they did think about the issue of location. Maybe you stay closer to this person, so it would be easier if you are. But you could, uh, if you are in campus ministry, you will be discipled by someone in the campus ministry. Unless you are in leadership in the campus ministry, then you might be uh, uh, discipled by somebody that is in the singles ministry or in some leadership, but outside of campus, okay? So she starts inviting me to church. Then I go to church. There is midweek service. Yo, I make so much shame. There was a church service on a Sunday. There was um, a midweek service. But a midweek service was divided into two. There was a midweek service for campus ministry. There was a midweek service uh, for uh, everybody else. And uh, yes, you guys. And then there were Bible talks. Uh, there was a Bible talk, I think, once a week. And then different residences. If you have a disciple in the residence, you will have a Bible talk in that res. And um, if the other residences don't have disciples, you will go invite people there. If you can get people to come to this particular res or whatever. You know, somebody's room, just a small and anything. So there was a lot of activities that were going on. There was a fr fr something that was called Friday Devotion okay so on friday there was a friday devotion hey i remember us walking by auckland park so yes email me so it's a tough your request a basis or it's a tough email you are taking food when you come out i'm a uber nama but it's got there was a meter text the meter text the the meter when you get in a text the meter goes to so we used to walk okay fine so now I'm going to church, uh, all of that. Now, you know, I remember because there was a time where there was a, a, a midweek service for campus, a midweek service for everybody. 
and I remember this one time I went to both uh, the services and I remember OA uh, the Chinese girl coming to me and say you know that if you go to the midweek service for campus you don't have to come and I was like oh I thought I'm supposed to come to all and, okay but I think also I wanted to see my sister because my sister was going to was in the single ministry okay now guys the timing of it all is difficult for me to understand to to remember but by this time i think my sister got baptized and all of that i have to mention you guys that one of the things that are a trigger for me because i grew up with siblings not only siblings cousins as well it's it's a trigger for me to be compared in any way uh to my to my siblings it's a trigger for me if you want to uh start something with me compared to me to my siblings me and my uh, siblings grew up in the same household but we're very different we're different in personalities we're different in what we've achieved the work we do we're just uh, different but we are family but people tend to compare us a lot so at church as soon as somebody discovers that she is my sister people were like your sister is even baptized now and all of that so even that sometimes would put me off would one uh, make me want to take a step back but one thing i can say is that every time you see somebody getting baptized you feel like you are looking forward to it because it was made into a big deal their baptism wasn't necessarily going to the river in fact we never went to the river if there is a pool somewhere the baptism will take place there but a lot of the times it was baptisms were, were taking place in people's houses uh in in if they have a big enough bath their belief was uh that a baptism is somebody and they were guys everything that they do or they are that they are convincing you you need to do they will find a scripture in the bible that refers to that thing and it the way that they will read it to you and interpret it to you and the way that you will try and interpret it yourself after they read it to you it will be exactly like they say okay so even the way that they did their baptism it was there were scriptures in the Bible that they referred to to say this is how a baptism is supposed to go. I remember the emphasis on saying that if you baptize somebody, it has to be in the in water and the whole body has to be uh, go beneath the water. In in clarifying that, they were trying to uh, let you know that that the sprinkle. I don't know if it's the um, Roman Catholics would do the sprinkle with the kids. They were trying to tell you that uh, that baptism is not correct in saying that the correct baptism is somebody going under water. And also, they were very specific to say that the person that gets baptized is the person that is of an age where they make their own decision. That they, That's why you have to do the Bible studies. And you could only do the Bible studies in your teen years and above. So, uh, children's ministry, none of the children got baptized. Children were not getting baptized. There was a kid's kingdom there. They would read the Bible, to be told all the Bible story, uh, stories and all the, none of the children would get baptized. You will have to be at an age where you make your own decision that you want to be a disciple. And you will, even if you were born at church, your parents were at church, you will still need to do the studies and then make a decision you want to get baptized and get baptized, okay? I'm getting over and over in this one. Okay. So, I was explaining about the studies. You guys, so you can forgive me. There is a lot to talk about. I actually should have had a, a structure of... I'm going to talk about this, but bear with me. In terms of a study, I talked about the word. Né? And then there's the kingdom. Okay. The word emphasizes you, the Bible is very important to you if you are a Christian. The word of God is what you live by. Okay. But when you are there, you don't re realize how much they put it on you to interpret the Bible exactly the way that they interpret the Bible. To a point where you will feel like it's incorrect for you to question certain things when it comes to the Bible. Okay. Now, the next one that I remember that used to be emphasized is the one that was called the kingdom. Okay. The kingdom, basically, the takeaway from that study was that the kingdom of God in uh, this day and age is the church, okay? That is where God is. So, and the church is the people, okay? It's the people in the kingdom of God. So, they were emphasizing that it's very important to spend as much time as possible in the kingdom of God, fellowshipping in the kingdom of God, okay? It... Um, 
it's not that they will say you are not allowed to spend time with people that are not of the kingdom but the amount of time that was required for you to spend time with people that are of the kingdom made you not have any time to spend with your other friends that were not in the kingdom okay so uh and also at the end of that study what you will take away was that the only church that was the right church of god as it is the church of christ was the church the international churches of christ and everything you guys will find in the bible because in that uh, study called the kingdom they will say the kingdom of god is supposed to do this and this and this and this and this which church do you know that does this and this and this and when you go through this even if you think to yourself the way that they 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 do that study you would be thinking maybe the catholic church it is hey but they don't do this maybe the faith mission is hey but they don't do this so with every church you will find something that is like the only church that you will feel like is doing the things that they're supposed to do it would be the church of christ so when you are done with that study you will be taking away that the only church the only right church is the church of christ okay I remember when I was on campus, you guys, just before I, when I started going to the church and uh, on campus we had, there were three big organizations. Uh, there was CAF, Christian organization, there was CAF and there was another one that had a lot of like white people <laughs> because the CAF was mostly just the born again, you know, the born again. And then the other one was the born again, but it had Abelungu and then there was, and I remember that the the other organization the other the student that went to these organizations when you say you go to church of christ they were always like oh you go to church of christ yes and i remember having a, a conversation with one of my friends and she was like you know um uh she was like i was once invited to church of christ and i felt like everything they do uh is right i was very excited but i i i i i had a doubt when they talked about the fact that they don't believe in um in the holy spirit okay so here's the thing a church of christ they don't believe in <laughs> i don't know how else to believe it like the holy spirit they believe yeah, they're in the father and the son and the holy spirit but i don't believe what the holy spirit has to be you know <laughs> so even in their singing um it's more like for me it worked because it's more like practical they're singing it's just song you sing a song you don't go not like that it's like guys i don't know how to explain it you know also they don't believe in speaking in tongues at church of christ they believe and there will be scriptures that they would read that you know you know uh when the story happened in the bible and people started speaking in tongues those people were actually speaking in other languages in foreign languages so this tongue thing now that people do where they speak in tongues but it's not really a language and nobody knows what it means it's not tongues tongues were supposed to be somebody like me not knowing french i don't know how to speak french but if i started speaking in french all of a sudden and i don't know where it come from there is tongues and they say that every time somebody does that there must be somebody in the church that interprets what they've just said so you can't just have a member of the church just speaking in tongues and then nobody knows what they were saying and the church continues and also it has to be a language that somebody understands okay which never happens in church. So for me, it was practical. I was like, yeah, no, no, yeah, but Allah, ni right to veil and go, but mukumoto a veil and jatia. A parakata da, you know what do they say? I'm getting that my ni right to veil it so there were things you guys that for me it worked. I like church service that is like you know you go to church structured, they sing. And then there is whatever, and then the preacher, and then the whatever. I think what I don't uh, like in my point again is like, forever, you know? So there are things that for me worked. It was like, okay, here. But then there were other things that were just like, okay. But you guys, let me see. Okay, <laughs> maybe I will end this part and then continue in another uh, video. Anyway, you guys, so uh, with uh, now I am going to church and then I'm going to my devotions. I'm going to whatever while I'm studying the Bible with um, uh, with G. OK, the other ladies uh, basically gave up on me. But I also think that you guys having been a part of that church because uh, how you are. 
how do I say this? They like Habantu. They have this way where they say someone is sharp. You know, they like saying, oh, I met this sharp sister, whatever. What they mean there, they mean you look a certain way, you speak a certain way, like you can, you influential somehow. So they liked targeting people like that, especially that people that were like in uh, leadership and all of that. They liked getting uh, Amasolza like that. Amasolza Bandaba like that. I guess to them, those people were important. So I guess for them, it was just like, they didn't, they didn't get why it was a difficult study when I was a plain Jane. <laughs> they didn't know that plain Jane has a brain, okay? So we study, we study with, um, with a G and, but G was a young disciple. So now and then a B would come and then uh, A would come as well. And I think by the time I got baptized, I was, you know, I was used to them, you know. So now, you guys, um, where was my baptism? I don't even know whose house my baptism was at. <laughs> but I did. Exciting, you guys. Now I am a disciple. Okay. Now, remember, for me, uh, becoming a disciple wasn't really about, like, I want to be a disciple. Because a disciple basically means that you are working for Jesus. You're going to be recruiting people, uh, saving souls, and all of that, you guys. For me, I just wanted, it was like a conflicting thing for me, dealing with a group of the leaders, the people that were full-time in the ministry, those women that I dealt with, that I slept at their house, and dealing with the group of students that were on campus, uh, we're sharing the food, sometimes they sleep in my room, sometimes I sleep in their room and all of that. Dealing with that group and this group was like two different things. So it's like I really liked spending time with this group but not necessarily this group. But also I liked being in church, I liked the service, I liked everything about it. I liked the way that they interpreted the word, they made it sound serious, um, simple, you know. And also another thing that uh, they do that makes you want to get baptized is that when it's, okay, when it's Sunday service, everybody goes to the same. I'm a venues, are, but it will be maybe at a school where they, they have a hall, they use a school hall, and then um, they would have classes. Okay, so what would make you really want to get baptized sometimes would be the midweek. At midweek service, you'll find that they will go there at uh, midweek. Then they um, sing everything. You know, the introduction of the service, they sing everything. And then after that, they say visitors must go to class. So you go to class to do Bible, some Bible st uh, studies. But you don't. You know, the nice part is the main service. So when you are there, you know it's because I'm still studying the Bible. And it makes you want to uh, finish, get baptized, so that you can attend the main service, the whole of the main service. But you guys, what they were doing actually about that was that things like um, contribution, like umnige law, uh, and that dealing with how many visitors do you have and uh, how many studies do you have taking stats they used to call it stats because every every leader will have to take a state to go to this person has uh, is giving this much in contribution did they give this week uh, do they have a study do they have those things they don't do while the visitors are there okay it's like we're not gonna talk about it budgeted like uh, while the visitors are like in the dining room okay we'll wait for them to go then we go to the bedroom and be like yo <laughs> you know what i mean so then you're thinking because when you are a visitor all you see is that amazing singing and when they sing you guys you know you feel you're feeling at i am thinking we get clapping in line but people are singing about jesus people are laughing hey they hold each other's hands it's that type of a church they hold each other's hands Ooh, hey and then when 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 umfunde is the preacher is like preach preach you're one of your and you're like yo come nandila <laughs> you're like come um, nandila preach preach yes brother yes sister yes sister and then maybe end of the service they're like we have a baptism kupa um nandila the women's service so you see that way as a, as a visitor, you go that side, they talk about serious things. Now they're preaching. If I went to the singing now, you know, <laughs> you know, so it would make you want to uh, get baptized. So I get baptized, you guys, fine. Uh, anyway, let me, let me end it here. Ne? So that 
I can talk next about um, what happens then when you are already in the church, okay? <laughs>